Hello everyone. Today, we are going to be talking about von Gierke disease, starting with the etiology. Von Gierke disease is an autosomal recessive disorder and occurs due to defective or a deficiency of an enzyme glucose 6-phosphatase in the liver, kidney, and intestinal mucosa. The incidence of GSD1, or glycogen storage disease 1, is 1 in 100,000 live births. It is one of the most common types of glycogen storage diseases. The genetics of von Gierke disease are as follows. The G6Pase, or glucose 6-phosphatase gene, G6PC, is located on chromosome 17Q21, while the glucose 6-phosphate translocase gene, solute carrier family 37, member 4, or SLC37A4, is localized to chromosome 11Q23. The pathophysiology is as follows. Glucose 6-phosphatase is a key enzyme required for the final step of gluconeogenesis, where glucose 6-phosphate converts into glucose. The hydrolysis and transport of glucose 6-phosphate, or G6P, requires a catalytic hydrolase, and microsomal transporters GSD1 is caused by defects in the phosphatase or translocase. Based on this, there are two key subtypes, GSD1A and GSD1B. GSD1A is due to a deficiency in the enzyme G6P hydrolase, or glucose 6-phosphatase, also abbreviated G6Pase. It's due to a deficiency in G6P hydrolase activity and comprises over 80% of cases of GSD1. G6Pase is expressed in the liver, intestine, and kidney. GSD1B is also known as G6P transporter deficiency and it is caused by a defect in the enzyme G6P translocase that is functionally associated with the G6Pase. Translocase transports glucose 6-phosphate into the endoplasmic reticulum where it is hydrolyzed by glucose 6-phosphatase. The enzyme also plays a role in neutrophil homeostasis and function. But what about the clinical manifestations? Well, let's talk about those now. Defective activity of either G6Pase or its transporter leads to progressive glycogen accumulation, mainly in the liver, and fasting hypoglycemia, which results in a number of secondary metabolic manifestations. Affected patients most commonly present between 3 to 6 months of age, with hepatomegaly, signs and symptoms of hypoglycemia, poor growth, and doll-like faces, particularly with fat cheeks. In the European study, the following were dominant presenting features. A protruding abdomen, resulting from hepatomegaly, this was found in 83% of all cases. Metabolic derangement, including hypoglycemia, lactic acidosis, hypertriglyceridemia, and hyperuricemia. These were all found at 71%. Growth failure, such as short stature or thin legs, was found in 25% of cases. Recurrent bacterial infections, which were present with different percentages based on the type, with 3% in GSD1A and 41% in GSD1B. Muscular hypotonia was also present in 13% of all cases. And lastly, there was delayed psychomotor development, 
present in 7% of all cases. Let's now consider hypoglycemia. Hypoglycemia is the hallmark finding in patients with GSD1. Unlike other GSDs, hypoglycemia in GSD1 is characterized by hypoketosis due to inhibition of fatty acid oxidation by malonic acid. Patients have poor fasting tolerance, especially infants and young children, and may develop hypoglycemia within an hour or two after a meal. Symptoms of hypoglycemia include fatigue, irritability, nighttime waking to feed, and seizures. Patients often adapt to hypoglycemia and may be asymptomatic despite low blood glucose levels, being less than 40 mg per deciliter. Next, there's lactic acidosis. It is the inability to break down glycogen into glucose. This results in shunting of G6P down the glycolytic pathway with resultant lactic acid production. Untreated patients may have serum lactate concentrations between 5 to 10 millimoles per liter. With regards to hyperuricemia, many patients have hyperuricemia, which is secondary to decreased renal clearance and increased production via degradation of adenine nucleotides. Gout rarely develops before puberty. We can also discuss hyperlipidemia. Marked hyperlipidemia, especially hypertriglyceridemia, occurs and can lead to xanthoma formation and pancreatitis. De novo triglyceride synthesis has been shown to increase over tenfold in affected individuals. We can also discuss the hematologic manifestations. Anemia, while uncommon in treated patients, can be observed in both the pediatric and adult populations. It can result from chronic kidney disease, nutritional deficiencies, hemorrhage of hepatic adenomas, enterocolitis in type 1B patients, and other factors. Platelet dysfunction, which is related to dyslipidemia, can result in easy bruising and epistaxis. Patients with GSD1B also have intermittent or chronic neutropenia and neutrophil dysfunction. We can also talk about the gastrointestinal manifestations. Perioral and perianal infections, abscesses, and inflammatory bowel disease, or IBD, are common in GSD1B. IBD can occur in GSD1A and may be underrecognized. There are also endocrine manifestations. Short stature is common if patients are not appropriately managed. Puberty is often delayed, and menstrual cycles are frequently irregular. Polycystic ovaries and menorrhagia have been observed. An increased prevalence of thyroid autoimmunity and hypothyroidism have been reported in patients with GSD1B, and vitamin D levels are often low. Next, we have renal manifestations. Renal disease results from glycogen accumulation in the kidney. Proteinuria, hematuria, nephrocalcinosis, and altered creatine clearance typically follow a period of asymptomatic hyperfiltration. Stones result both from hypercalciuria and hyperuricosuria. The kidney appears enlarged, and histologic examination reveals focal segmental glomerulosclerosis 
and interstitial fibrosis. Hypertension is common, and the onset is typically in the second decade or later. A subset of patients develops progressive renal insufficiency and end-stage kidney disease. Some neurologic manifestations are also present. Patients with GSD-1 are at risk for hypoglycemic seizures. The intelligence quotient, or IQ, is normal, but brain function and structure may be altered as a result of recurrent, severe hypoglycemia. We should also discuss hepatic adenomas. Most adults develop liver adenomas in the second to third decade of life. The adenomas may lead to intrahepatic hemorrhage and undergo malignant transformation in approximately 10% of cases. Bone density manifestations are also present. Osteoporosis is seen in over half of adult patients with GSD-1A and 1B. Decreased bone mineral density may be due to a chronic lactic acidosis, the effect of cortisol release in response to hypoglycemia on osteoblasts, and treatment of GSD itself, which involves dietary restriction of lactose and galactose that leads to vitamin D deficiency. And the last manifestation we'll briefly discuss is pulmonary hypertension. A small number of patients develop pulmonary hypertension, which can lead to progressive heart failure. Now that we've covered the various clinical manifestations, let's talk about the diagnosis of GSD-1. GSD-1 should be suspected in patients with hypoglycemia, lactic acidemia, hypertriglyceridemia, hyperuricemia, and hepatomegaly with or without neutropenia. DNA testing is necessary to confirm the diagnosis of GSD-1A or 1B. A guideline for the diagnosis and management of GSD-1 is available from the American College of Medical Genetics and Genomics. And now we can talk about the management of von Guericke disease, or GSD-1. The goal of treatment is maintenance of physiologic glucose levels. Other clinical and biochemical parameters, such as somatic growth, lactic acidosis, and hypertriglyceridemia, improve in parallel with improved glucose control Glucose concentrations are maintained with regular meals, snacks, and administration of uncooked cornstarch. There is also restricted dietary intake of fructose and galactose because these molecules cannot be converted into glucose. The treatment of lactic acidosis is as follows. Lactic acidosis, if persistent, can be treated with oral citrate or bicarbonate administration, which also alkalinizes the urine and decreases the risk of urolithiasis and nephrocalcinosis. There is also the treatment of hyperuricemia that we can consider. Right now, there is no consensus as to when to treat hyperuricemia with medications. Allopurinol lowers uric acid levels and can be used in patients with persistently elevated uric acid or with recurrent attacks of gout. Colchicine may be used during acute attacks. The use of medium-chain triglyceride oil was shown in a small study to improve uric acid levels and reduce carbohydrate requirements. Another management is necessary for neutropenia. Patients with GSD-1B and neutropenia should be treated with granulocyte colony-stimulating factor, or GCSF. 
Treatment with GCSF increases neutrophil count, decreases the frequency and severity of infections, and improves inflammatory bowel symptoms. Splenomegaly is the most serious complication of GCSF. This concludes our discussion of von Gierke disease, glycogen storage disease 1. I hope you found this video interesting and informative. Until next time, thank you so much for watching, and have a wonderful rest of your day.